where California Coast of America is predicted to follow. At present, 72% of the U.S. population is non-Hispanic white. At present, 72% of the U.S. population is non-Hispanic white. The U.S. Census Bureau predicts that non-Hispanic whites will become a minority between 2055 and 2060. The U.S. Census Bureau predicts that non-Hispanic whites will become a minority between 2055 and 2060. Let me interject. This article was written in the year 2000. We are now in the year 2022. By 2055, 33 years from now, 33 years from now, the American non-Hispanic white population is predicted to be a minority in 33 years. The reason this is important for you to understand, brothers and sisters, is everything being done right now, beginning with the release of Omicron and all its variants, all the abortion and hysterectomy, all the mass incarceration, the black on black crime, the police genocide, everything being done right now is being done to reverse a trend. Please hear me well. Please hear me well. Please hear me well. Everything being done right now is being done to reverse a trend that is turning Europeans into a significant global minority, not only in America, but across the world. I continue reading. Not everyone likes the new face of America. White far-right extremists predict the breakup of the Union. Thomas Chittam, a New Jersey-based Vietnam War vet, declared in his book Civil War II that the United States, like Yugoslavia, will shatter into new, ethnically-based nations. He says, quote, America was born in blood. America suckled on blood. America gorged on blood. And America grew into a giant. And America will drown in blood. Now, here's a few things I want to say concerning the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He taught us, the original man, that the Caucasians are the devil. There is no devil in the earth with a pitchfork with horns. He said that the devil is the Caucasian race, so-called white race. Now, my question is, if they are the devil and they go to church every Sunday, then who in the hell are they actually praying to? If they're claiming to pray to the God, the righteous God, but yet they're the devil, that means that they can't pray to the righteous God. That makes no fucking sense whatsoever. So we'll just rule that out. So who are they really praying to and worshiping in these churches? Bottom line, we have been deceived if this be the truth in what has been said. Now, I want to point something out and make it very, very clear. And I'm going to show it with proof. If you were never taught about a name of a God, none of that, and you were just going out people that are good and people that are bad, just based off attributes, based off morality, you would be able to determine what's a devil and what's a God-like being, a righteous God-like being, okay? Now, y'all stick close with me because we about to uncover some shit that's been in your face all your life and you never even saw it, nor paid attention to it. Now, in the Bible, as you can clearly see, 1 Samuel chapter 15 Verse 2 to 3, God is talking about killing babies. Does that sound like a righteous God? He's talking about killing innocent babies now. It had nothing to do with nothing. Okay, we just finna, I'm just going to point this shit out so you can see who they got you really serving. Okay, you can see who the Caucasian slave makers taught our ancestors to pray to and which the majority of the original people have been praying to 
to traditionally because it's been passed down from generation to generation. Let's keep going. If you go to Numbers chapter 31, verse 17 through 18, kill women and children. Kill women and children. Now, when you look at the history of all races, the the race that outnumber any race on the planet that went around doing this shit is the Caucasian. So Elijah Muhammad, so far he's right and exact on saying that the Caucasian race is the devil. Now let's keep going. Now he called them the blue-eyed devil, but let's keep going. Let's see. Deuteronomy. Go to Deuteronomy, y'all, in your King James Version, 1611 Version. Go to chapter 13, verse 6 through 10. Kill people of other religions. That's what the Christians did. Shit, that's what the Muslims did too, the Orthodox Muslims. That's how they established I mean, uh, Islam, was through the sword. Now, let's keep going. Shit, I'm starting to think, well, I've been thought our religions was was our, was some a form of a evil entity because in order for them to establish, they had to kill. Okay, but the Nation of Islam, they ain't kill no damn body. They just established their shit. But let's just keep it pushing. <clears throat> Second uh, Chronicles, uh, yeah, Chronicles, chapter chapter fifteen, verse thirteen. Kill atheists. Kill. All they want to do is kill. Okay, keep going. Genesis chapter fifteen, uh, verse nine through ten. Go to First Samuel chapter fifteen. Go to verse second verse and third verse. It said kill animals. Okay, you're talking about uh, animal sacrifice and all that low vibrational shit. Okay, then check this one out. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 14 through 21. Kill a wife if she's not a virgin. God damn. You might as well kill everybody, damn near every woman on the planet. See what I'm talking about? Let's keep it pushing. We're going to keep it pushing. All right, um... <clears throat> We go to Numbers, Book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 32 to 36. Kill people who work on Sunday. Well, shit. A lot of people going to be killed. This God just ready. He, he on a damn killing spree. Serious. Sound like a serial killer so far, y'all. And so far, um, wow. we're we looking at a psychopath. Let's keep it going, though. This ain't no righteous God. This sound like the damn devil. Well, let's keep it pushing, though. Looking at the people who, who serve this God. Now let's go to um Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. Kill gays. That's what it said in the book. It say kill homosexuals. I ain't say this shit. I'm reading it for y'all, so I don't need no bullshit. Talking about some I'm anti this. No, the God in the Bible is anti-gay. The God in the Bible is anti-babies. The God in this Bible is anti-children. The God in the Bible is anti-other religions. The God in the Bible is anti-atheist. The God in the Bible is anti-not being a virgin. So I don't want to hear no bullshit from you weak-minded, low-level thinking ass trying to twist shit and paint a picture that ain't even there. Motherfuckers, I don't want to hear none of that weak-ass shit. I'm telling you what the Bible says. Go pick up your King James Bible. Read the shit. I don't need nobody chopping up my words. None of that shit. Read it for yourself because I know how sensitive y'all overly emotional ass motherfuckers can get. The God in the Bible said, go kill gays. That's what the shit say. Moving on. Leviticus chapter 25, verse 44 through uh, 46. Slavery is fine. This way he's talking about slavery is fine. You even give out laws on how to govern your slaves and this shit. Does this sound like a righteous God or does this sound like a devil? Now, I'm just, I want to know, who the fuck is the devil praying to if the Caucasians, according to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, is the devil? Who the fuck are they praying to? We going to get there, y'all. I'm just raising the question, but I know who the fuck they praying to. We going we gonna to get there. Let's go. Now, if you go to Exodus chapter 21, verse 20 to 21. You can beat your slaves. Yeah, that shit. We talking about a low vibrational nothing ass motherfucking God. But this is the de this got to be the devil. That's what I'm telling y'all. This is the devil. This is the words of a demonic, a low demonic ass motherfucker. Ain't no righteous God gonna say some shit like that. 
Today we will put this motherfucker. All this shit I just read so far has this deity has qualified it himself because he claimed to be a him or itself. We don't know what the fuck it really is. Has qualified itself to be in a mental institution in a fucking straight jacket. Straight up. Now let's keep going. We go to Exodus chapter 21 verse 7. Men can sell their daughters as slaves. If this ain't one heartless, reptilian, minded, low vibrational, vampiric ass motherfucker, this motherfucker need to be beat with a whip. Just by even putting shit in his mind, by confusing and deceiving the fucking world. But it's y'all fault, because y'all, you heard what Elijah Muhammad said in the beginning. I ain't make them do nothing. Ain't, ain't that what he said? The Quran say that this this devil said, this this Satan said. I just called them and they came. They did it. He didn't make you do nothing. You did it because you wanted to. He just gave the call. He just deceived you. You ain't have sense enough to see through the bullshit. Because you sheep. You sheep. Now let's keep going. Alright. Um, first Peters. Chapter 2, verse 18. Slaves must obey cruel masters. This the shit that it's talking about. Don't tell me I'm making up this shit. Go pull up the verses and see for your goddamn self. Go get your Bible. Because a lot of y'all just overly sensitive. Can't stand the truth because it makes you challenge your brain cells. And your brain cells go in shock. And then you start having hypertension. And then you start going in depression and stress and that. Because you can't wrestle with the damn truth because it's whooping your ass. Now let's keep it pushing. Now we go to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. Also go to Ephesians or whatever the fuck that is. Chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. Y'all can see it for yourself. Read it because it's right there. Women must obey men. This that patriarchal shit that was not tolerated in the old world or the ancient world where it was a matriarchal system. Intelligence ran the goddamn community. Not just men. If a man did not qualify to be over certain categories of education, I don't give a shit if it was in a household, it was in society. His ass was not meant to rule that area. You get in where you fit in. All this man over women shit, women over man. No, intelligence must rule. Anyway, let's keep it pushing. When you go to Deuteronomy, y'all, chapter 28, verse 30, obey God or your girlfriend will be raped. Did y'all hear that shit? Obey God or your girlfriend will be raped. If this ain't some barbaric, out of the cave man, Neanderthal minded, low vibrational, primitive minded, undeveloped brain ass shit. This the motherfucker the majority following today. They following this low vibrational ass beast. And then had a nerve to say praise Jesus. Ain't nowhere in the fucking Bible where Jesus tell you to pray to him or praise him. Okay? Nowhere in the fucking Bible. If anybody can find it in the Bible, I cash up your ass. Fifty dollars. If you can find it and pull it up where Jesus said, pray to him and, and praise him. He said, worship the father. That's what he say in the Bible. Now, let me keep pushing. Got it. I just had to throw that in there because some of y'all know how y'all mind work shit to go different routes. But let's keep it pushing. Now, we see we're dealing with a, a motherfucker that need to be in a mental institution. Now, let's keep it pushing. This is ain't none of this my word. It's coming straight out the Bible, y'all. I'm just... I'm just pointing it out. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 10 and 16. Invade countries, enslave and kill. This is what the God talking about in these verses in Deuteronomy chapter 20. Invade countries, enslave and kill. Now who fit this description to the max? The Caucasians. So was Elijah Muhammad lying concerning history that ties into the Bible? That was interpreted by a bunch of racist-ass, nothing-ass motherfuckers? No, he was not. But let's just keep it pushing. 
So I'm here to say that he was directly, emphatically correct concerning the facts to bag up his allegations using the Bible that ties in with history. Now, let's move on to Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7. God creates good and evil. Now, I read that verse. I remember that one. It says God, God creates evil. But when you read the verse, it says God, I the Lord create good, I the Lord create evil, I the Lord do all these things. In other words, if you want to go to the source of good and evil, you got to go to this God in the Bible. We're going to get there. So if you had any sense, you would say, blame it on God. Okay, let's keep it going. Romans chapter 9, verse 16 through 18. Then you can go to John chapter 6, verse 44. You can't choose whether you go to hell or heaven. You can't choose. In other words, you ain't got no free will. In other words, your destiny is not written out ahead of you. Y'all getting this? Let's keep going. Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. God punishes children for the parents' sin. Ain't that some shit? Now we're looking at the law of cause and effect, but it's being taken out on innocent people. But now if you're inheriting something that was uh, taken through robbing, murdering, conquering, you know, that's basically like receiving stolen property. So I can kind of understand that in that aspect that your ass will be held accountable for receiving stolen merchandise and benefiting from the atrocity of some genocidal acts by your fathers and forefathers and mothers. Let's keep it going. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 13 to 14. Beat children, beat them with a rod. Nah, just the only one I somewhat agree with. Some of these children don't understand nothing but a good ass whooping. Okay? I ain't saying all children. Depends on the child. Some of them deserve a good ass whooping. In my eyes, you know, I'm old school. But I'm against whooping children. I don't like whooping children. But some of them, that's the only language they understand. But now let's get to the heart of this shit and find out who these Caucasians, according to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the devil, the devils, are praying to. Oh, this shit finna get good, y'all. Y'all hanging out. All right, this video has been interrupted for a brief moment. I'm out here sitting in the car trying to make this here video. And guess what, y'all? According to the honor of Elijah Muhammad, a devil just walked up on me. Looking all in my goddamn car trying to be fucking nosy. Ain't that some shit? Talking about the goddamn devils. And a motherfucker walk up, looking all in my shit, trying to see what the fuck I'm doing. Nosy ass motherfucker. Anyway, thought I'd just... Mention that because I thought that was kind of odd. Now, we're going to get back on this. Just who are the devils worshiping? Let's get to the root of this. Now, we're going to start at the top of the food chain and work our way to the bottom. Because leadership starts at the top. And it trickles down like a domino effect. And it affects the others. So, we're going to start at the top of the totem. Now, let's start with these Jewish people. The international bankers, those that have basically colonized the world financially, that finance all sides of wars. I don't care who is against who, as long as they benefit. It's all about self-gain. They have the exact same characteristics as the reptilians. They are all in it for self. They know nothing about the law of oneness. But let us continue. If you go inside the book, The Hidden Tyranny, the issue that dwarfs all other issues, here... Um, the Ross, the Rosenthal document, we find out whom and why the Jewish people are considering themselves the chosen of God. They say they are the chosen people of God. They are actually correct. They are the chosen of God. We have been misled all this time. We thinking we the chosen of God, black people in America. We are to a certain extent, but there's a flip side. For every 
thing that is in your favor, there's something else in the favor of the negative side. Just like it is on the positive side. You get me? Now let's check this out. Look, in the book, The Hidden Tyranny, most Jews do not like to admit it, but our God is Lucifer. Now this is, this is coming from the Jewish scholar. Okay, now this book was written by Harold Wallace Rosenthal. The guy was actually murdered. Now, it's claimed that he was murdered during a terrorist attack somewhere in Turkey. But truth is, we know he was assassinated for exposing way too many secrets in this damn book. But let's keep it pushing. Now, I can really just check this shit out because he clearly mentions in this book that that's who they worship. They worship Lucifer. And no, this is not talking about the Kundalini Lucifer. This is not talking about Lord Inky. We gonna get to who they calling Lucifer, okay? We gonna get to why these motherfuckers feel like they feel, especially when you read the Talmud. But let's keep it pushing. Reading the highlighted format, this is coming out of the same guy, uh, the, the Jewish person, boo, okay? Let's check it out. We're gonna read the highlighted format. Do you have knowledge of when and why the story began about the Jews being God's chosen people. That is when he said in part, most Jews do not like to admit it, but our God is Lucifer. So I wasn't lying. And we are his chosen people. Lucifer is very much alive. Man, I ain't even got to say no more. This is who the Jewish people worship. This is why you, when, you, when you read in the Talmud, all they talk about is killing anybody that is not of their Jewish faith or in their blood lineage. Okay? These motherfuckers are parasites, cancers on the earth. And if you want to heal the planet, you got to get rid of the cancer. Now, let's just get to who these Caucasians are worshiping. Because clearly we saw in the beginning of this here video after Honorable Elijah Muhammad exposed and the shit, and then Umar Johnson came in and basically gave us a broad announcement of why they are killing us like they are, because they're trying to preserve their race like they've been doing for centuries as long as they've been there, because it's a part of their nature, if they're the devil. And this ties into the Bible in which we just saw that they have the characteristics of the God in the damn Bible that ain't shit. Now let's just get to the heart of this shit and find out who they're actually worshiping. Archons. In the Gnostic Gospels, these demonic entities suppressed humans' ability to transcend out of the material realm. Some believe that they built a matrix construct into the minds of the human race in order to harvest their psychic energy like parasites. Could this be related to the default mode network? Real Christianity. And the first people they started to persecute were the Gnostics. Because the Gnostics, and this is an idea that many who are committed to Christianity will, will find repulsive or very difficult to accept. The Gnostics said that the entity that we call God, Jehovah, as he is in the Old Testament, the Muslims call him Allah, it's the same entity, the God of Abraham. That this entity, the, 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 the God of, of Judaism as well, of course, Je Jehovah, God of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, goes by different names, he's the same entity, but this entity isn't a God at all from the Gnostic point of view. They, from the Gnostic point of view, the simple word to describe him is a demon. He's a demon. And uh, what he's done is he has convinced mankind that he is God. And he wants us to, because he's really a demon, not a god at all, he wants to bring out the worst in us. He wants us to behave in ways that cause fear and terror and hatred and division because that's what he thrives on. That's what he, that's what he grows on. He grows on that, <clears throat> on that, uh, the manipulation of hatred in humanity. And, and, and if you look at the statements and the actions of the God of the Old Testament, he is not a nice guy. The stuff he did, does, the, the mass murders that he's, that he's responsible for, the incitement that he delivers to his followers to engage in horrific acts occurs again and again. And you have to ask yourself, can this be a good thing? 
Can this be a good thing when he's telling us to go off and commit acts of murder in his, in his name? And those acts of murder, what I often say is, when you look at the three mainstream monotheistic faiths, all of them talk the talk of peace and love. But actually, if you look at the walk they walk, it's a walk of hatred and fear and suspicion. And it seems to me that there's a real chance that the Gnostics were right and that the entity that we have been hoodwinked by a supernatural entity, if you like, by, by, by a, a demonic entity who has persuaded us that he is God, made us act in his name, the crusades, the religious wars, the terrible divisions, the persecutions of members of other faiths that have occurred, all of that is not the action of a good and loving God. All of that is the, is the action of a demon, and that's what the Gnostics said he was. They called him the Demiurge, and they felt that he had... <coughs> He had um, representatives in the human race who disguised themselves as human beings, who were called archons, whose whole sole task was to mislead us further down the path of darkness and take us away so that we would never realize the divine spark within ourselves and that a grand cosmic game is being played out here, uh, of, which, of which the human race is the fulcrum. And the decisions that we make and the choices that we make uh, are not only important to us, but are, but are important to the, to the whole cosmos. This is the center of the Gnostic idea. It's a very powerful idea, and I think it's an idea that, that merits further exploration. Gnosticism is a belief system that grew up along with the Christian church in the first century AD, intermingling elements of Judeo-Christianity with Neoplatonism Gnostics became a big problem for the Christian church. Apparently their position was quite tempting. While Gnosticism is not a centralized system, we can safely identify some core principles that Gnostics have in common. They're generally dualists, believing in a distinction between the spiritual and physical elements of existence. It's safe to say that they strongly favor the spiritual aspect of reality, often considering the body and its desires worthless, if not harmful. A precursor to this idea can be found in Plato's Phaedo. They also tend to gravitate towards secret, personal knowledge, part of what the term gnosis means. Often, truth is only revealed to a select few, those who sufficiently reject the physical world in favor of spiritual enlightenment. The term Gnosticism is modern, originating in the 17th century. However, Gnostics have been mentioned explicitly, especially by Paul and the Church Fathers since the birth of Christianity. When they do show up, though, they tend to be portrayed as the bad guys. So what do you think? What's the value of Gnosticism? Are they the bad guys? No. The Gnostics were a group of Christians considered heretical by the early Catholic Church in the 3rd and 4th centuries. The Gnostics and their writings were burned and lost until an archaeological find in 1947. Here is how they said the universe was created. In the beginning, there was a purely spiritual substance, or the Supreme God. Various levels of supernatural creatures called Aeons emanated from it. The Aeon, or Goddess of Wisdom, called Sophia, decided she would create offspring without her partner. Because this was unnatural, her son was twisted and evil, not perfect like other offspring. Sophia sequestered this twisted godlike creature from the other aeons and he, called the Demiurge, began to create angels around him. And then he created our universe. Because he was alone when he started creating, he was arrogant and believed he was the ultimate god. He created humans and told them to worship only him. Because he is imperfect, his creation is imperfect and full of suffering. This is why there is pain and evil in the world. It is because the creator described in the Bible is the evil Demiurge. And we are living in a cosmic mistake. Can anybody relate? Who were the Gnostics and their mission to liberate humanity, part one. 1945, in Nag Hammadi, Egypt, a young boy found papyrus books that were still bound. These were actually ancient Gnostic texts that were rediscovered. The Nag Hammadi library is actually the most complete record of the Old Testament. The reason it's so controversial is because it contains some of the books that have not been seen since the church first edited them in the 4th century. In the early years of Christianity, from around 30 AD to 400 AD, there were many different types of Christians. They all referred to themselves as followers of Christ, yet had very different views. Among those early Christian sects, there was a group that called themselves the Gnostics. They believed that there was a divine spark in humanity, and the Gnostic mission was to liberate that divine spark. This was to provide us with the knowledge that would lead us to the revelation of understanding the true nature of things. Not the illusory nature that has been created to hoodwink all of us, but the real true nature of things. The idea of a simulated universe originated from these Gnostic texts that were suddenly discovered in 1945. These Gnostic texts named the creator of the universe as an aeon named Sophia 
ancient Greek needs wisdom. Here are the facts. In December of 1945, two men dug for fertilizer at the bottom of Egypt's Jabal al-Tarif cliff just outside of Nag Hammadi. In the ground, they found a jar that would fundamentally change the world. At first, they hesitated to open this container, fearing that it might contain a jinn. When they did open it, they found 12 to 13 leather-bound papyrus books, or codices. The ancient texts date from the 4th century AD, and they tell a very different story about the creation of the universe, a secret, vast conspiracy spanning the course of human history. What if the world we live in now is just a pale, evil shadow of reality? What if the god Abrahamic religions worship is false? Here's where it gets crazy. The Nag Hammadi Library revealed an astonishing amount of information about a mysterious group of sects known collectively as the Gnostics. The Gnostics believed that there was more than one world or universe, and that the one in which we reside, the world of time, flesh, and matter, was imperfect, a kind of false world ruled by a creator called the Demiurge. Gnostics believed that most Christians mistook this Demiurge for the highest god. In the Sethian school of Gnosticism, this hostile entity created the physical plane as a way of trapping souls. Essentially, the god worshipped by other sects of Christianity was, to the Gnostics, an adversary. Other sects of Gnosticism argued that this demiurge, instead of being a demonic force, worked in concert with the highest god towards spiritual salvation. While this idea may seem bizarre in the modern age, in its time Gnosticism was the focus of a war for the soul of Christianity. Orthodox Christians denounced Gnostic beliefs, along with other sects of early Christianity, as heresy. And, while it fell to the wayside, this belief system has left its mark on modern Christian teachings today. For many schools of Christian thought, Gnosticism was another heresy rooted out of the original and true teachings of God. Yet, according to the Gnostics, there is a vast conspiracy afoot, a cover-up on a cosmic scale, continuing today, and it's something Orthodox Christianity doesn't want you to know. Chakra essentially means something that is hidden. In the sense of biblical literature, uh, Apocrypha refers to the collection of books that are Kind of like the b-sides of the album that is the modern bible these are the things that are not typically included in the official version of some all right i think this shit is self-explanatory that the devil <clears throat> the devils according to the honorable elijah muhammad the caucasian race the blue-eyed devils we're sticking to the teachers of elijah muhammad today we will not detour but the devils have been worshiping yadabeth the chief archon, a low vibrational parasitic entity that feeds off pain, suffering, sorrow. So in translation, he's feeding off fragments of your soul, sparks of the divine creator. So hope y'all learned something from this video. If you got any feelings, oh, well, because I don't give a fuck because I told the truth. Telling the truth, if telling the truth hurts your feelings, the shit was just meant to hurt. Sorry about you. But this is where it works, okay? Life goes on. Peace, and may the force be with you.